Okay, good morning, everyone. I will try to start to give you a brief overview of the work we did in the MPI project. Um, <clears throat> I'll try to focus on the reasons why we um, developed a new phenology model and also the steps we have taken in the project to use different sources of data to parameterize and calibrate and validate the model. So MPI stands for National Phenology Initiative. Uh, the project is funded by GRDC. James Hunt um, is the national leader for the project. And James was in La Trobe when the project started, and he has now moved to University of Melbourne. <clears throat> so I listed the model, the, the, the people, the names of the people for the modeling team, and all, I'll try to acknowledge all the people at the end of my presentation. So I'll start with the so the version now for the uh, new phenology model. We all know now that uh, an optimal flowering time window exists um, for the plants for crops uh, in Australia to flower in that window to uh, maximize yield by avoiding negative impact of extreme temperatures and drought. So it is important to choose the right sowing time or for a given sowing opportunity to select the correct cultivar at a given site to get the yield maximized for crops like uh, wheat, barley, and canola. So it is um, for that reason, a good phenology model is needed to predicting the flow flowering time of different cultivars. The Existing phenology model weight um, in Epsim Classic hasn't been updated for a long time. Um, it has several deficiencies. In particular, it is difficult to get cultivars parameterized due to equifinality. Equifinality refers to the existence of multiple sets of parameters that can lead to similar or the same model performance. For example, we can adjust the sensitivity of vernalization or the sensitivity to photo period or cultivar to get uh, correct flowing time simulations, but it's difficult to know which one is right. To get a proper um, cultivar parameterization, we require data from contrasting environments. Field experiments are costly and also um, time consuming. So very often we are not able to parameterize cultivar at the time of release. For that reason, and the new phenology model was developed uh, to trying to capture the newest understanding from the genetics and try to link the key developmental genes to the physiological processes simulated in the model. Um, this is to try to reduce uh, this equal finality uh, by improving the size. And then next, and trying to enable the model parameterization using genotyping data and uh, leading to a quick parameterization at time of cultivar release. That is trying to reduce the reliance of field data with AMO data at least. And finally, um, hopefully, we can improve the predictions of flowering time as well and by reducing the uncertainty in the model. Okay, um, so the MPI project has five components, and the first one is the controlled environment phenotyping done in Latrobe by James and Tim, as to trying to measure the um, leaf development and uh, flowering time of different cultivars of wheat and barley in under treatment with uh, vernalized and non vernalized plant and growing under long or short photo period. I'll explain this a bit more later. And the second component is the field uh, data collection uh, done by Sadi with DPI, DPERD, and Latrobe. Try to collect um, measurement from the field for those cultivars at different sites with different sowing dates on, at each site. 
And the third one is genotyping um, and the genomics and trying to get the genotyping data for those materials and um, like the development alleles. This is done in CSRO by Jess House and uh, the colleagues. Um, so the data collected from the three components are uh, feeding into the fourth component, which is the model development and the validation. So Hamish um, in Plant and Food New Zealand and a couple of CSRO guys, um, including myself, um, Jigan Bangyu Neil, um, have been working on this component, try to develop the model and to get the model validated and hopefully with genetically derived parameters. <clears throat> and the last one is trying to use the developed model to uh, develop database interface and model interface on MVT website so that the model can be accessible to growers for simulation of flowering time. And this one hasn't been finished. It is now combined with the canola um, bit um, into a new project to develop flowering time calculator called MPI2 project led by Jeremy Wish and Julian Lilly now for the next three or four years. So the rest of the work we call the MPI, um, MPI1. That's the project. And <clears throat> we have gone through a couple of steps to do the work. The first one is to, of course, to develop the new phenology model in Epsom NG, which is based on the framework published by Hamish and colleagues in 2013, where they try to integrate the molecular and physiological understanding to explain time of flowering in wheat. <clears throat> So the new model um, includes a CAMP model, which stands for the Serial Anthesis Molecular Physiology Model, to simulate the development progress um, towards terminal spike lead and the final leaf number. And then a leaf um, filocron model to simulate the leaf if appearance and the flag leaf timing, and then a bit for the heading to anthesis um, uh, duration. Um, the second step we tried in the second step, we tried to use the data collected from the control environment to derive the model parameters. And the third step is to use the data from the field experiment to test and validate model predictions. And a further step was taken to improve the parameter uh, parameterization using part of the field data to further optimize the model parameters. And then um, the fifth one is try to develop a genetic model to link SNPs data, genotyping data with the EPSIM NG parameters so that we can try to derive the parameters from genotyping data. And finally, um, use the model to printing flow time, flowering time, and web delivery. So this one has been finished, as I said before. Uh, we had two hypotheses. Um, number one is Data from the control environment um, can be used to derive model parameters so that um, the field is run may not be needed in the future. Uh, in that case, we can save a lot of uh, time and cost um, for doing field experiments. And hypothesis number two is to if the data from the genotyping or SNPs can be used to, to derive or to infer the cultivar parameters the controlled environment may also be avoided. So in that case, we can just use the genotyping data to derive parameters for different cultivars and to simulate the flowering time. We spent a lot of time trying to use the data to test the two hypotheses. <clears throat> um, for the modeling component, um, in some we have four outputs. Uh, the first is the new phenology model. And the second one is trying to in integrate data from different sources into EPSIM NG. 
And the third one is we have the parameterization for core device using derived from the control environment data only and optimized for, with the uh, field experimental data and the parameters derived um, from the general genomic data with machine learning. And finally, we have the model validation results um, using the existing model as a baseline and using the parameters derived from the control development data to look at the value of the data uh, for parameterization and also pro the parameter sets optimized against part of the field data and the, op the parameter, uh, parameter, uh, parameters derived from the SNPs. <laughs> So the general typic data from the controlled environment is uh, the measurement of leaf stage, final leaf number, heading and thesis time in four controlled uh, conditions. So the first two is to vernalize the plant fully and then grow it at uh, 22 degree and long 16 hour and short 18, 8 hour photo period. So the next two is to let the plant non-vernalized by grow it into the high temperature 22 degrees also and short and long photo period so the, the graph on the right shows the difference potential difference of final leaf number so that are used to derive the parameters for the model and the field data including also leaf development and dates dates of heading and thesis um, of 60 now cultivars and 30 barley cultivars grown at four sites across Australia um, showing on the map including Wagga Wagga in New South Wales, Yan in Victoria, Callington in South Australia and Dow in WA. <laughs> So using the um, data from controlled environment, we derived eight parameters for cultivar characterization. So the first one is the final leaf number and the long photo period for vernalize the plant. So that in that case, the plant developed fixed. So the final leaf number is the minimum uh, final leaf number for the cultivar representing the early per se. So if we move um, from the baseline, this is the baseline um, to grow a plant, one last plant and short days, the plant will grow more leaves. The extra leaves um, are used, number of leaves are used to um, define the photo period sensitivity. And if we move further to grow a non vernalized plant and long days, and then the extra leaves representing the impact or uncertified vernalization. So that extra number of leaves is used to define the um, vernalization sensitivity. So if we grow the plant and no vernalized plant and short days, so the impact will be by both short days and non vernalized uh, unsatisfied vernalization. So we use that to define the vernalization photo period interactions in the model. <laughs> In addition to the four um, parameters, we also define the base field of crown for a cultivar using the uh, thermal time versus leaf number <coughs> slope for the leaf three to seven, uh, and also field of crown photo period by comparing the field of crown and uh, short devonalized uh, short versus long devonalized conditions. <coughs> and finally, the thermal time um, the duration from flag leaf to anthesis is defined um, using the number of base filler crowns um, and also a photo period sensitivity parameter is defined for this stage. <coughs> and eight internal camp model parameters were then derived to using the, the data I described before previously. And that's including the that's that's for the genes rate of gene expression for the key developmental genes one, two, three, and one X. 
in the camp model. So Hamish will talk, I guess, a little bit more on this by introducing the model. <coughs> I don't spend much time on that. <coughs> So in summary, we have the data sets uh, in uh, several data sets integrated into AppSim net, next generation. So for Australia, we have the MP, the data collected in the NPR project. So I discussed data from previous field experiments in, um, covering 46 sites and different sewing dates <coughs> of wheat. And we have the data from Hamish uh, from New Zealand uh, that also includes uh, data from controlled environment for six genotypes and a um, hundred genotypes with final leaf number and a field data as well from New Zealand for 50 genotypes. <laughs> and we also Previous validation data sets from different sources that are also uh, used for testing the model at the end. In addition, we have the general popping data from um, this and others. That's including the data for the NPI material for 69 wheat cultivars and 30 barley cultivars, and the data for the Oswald panel in for 49 cultivars and some data from Hamish um, from New Zealand. So this genotyping data is, has been used um, to construct um, a genetic model using random forest, trying to connect the genotyping data with the EPSIM parameters and then to optimize the, um, the, the, the whole process to have parameters that can give us best predictions for um, flowering time. So Bangyu, this is ongoing. Bangyu has been doing this um, for wheat, barley, and canola together. That's basically all the work we have done so far. And just to give you a bit of feeling about what kind of result we have got, so we have the validation a calibration and validation with the baseline model. Um, that's using whatever we have in the current model and to simulate the new data sets. So, and then we have the model performance just using the parameters derived from the controlled environment, environmental data only and testing the model against the field data. And then we have the third category of results that's used to further optimize the parameter using part of the field data and to improve the model performance. And that's the result we delivered to DRDC um, in the progress report. And now the result has been um, refined in the new um, version that is about to release. I'll stop here. Um, this is the entire MPI team, a lot of people involved um, in the work. Thank you.